Today we have a Unify XG16 10 gigabit switch. These things are pretty awesome. So, you know, gigabit, been around for a while. 10 gigabit, been around for a while too, actually. Uh, but 10 gigabit switches have not always been as affordable. They've been popular in data centers, of course, even faster uh, here in 2018. Uh, but this is a very reasonably priced with a lot of features, 12 port of FSFP and four gigabit copper RJ45 switch. This thing is pretty neat. So let's get it unboxed. And of course, then we'll jump into the software part of it. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> The box is nice. Uh, Unify does a nice job of putting all their boxes together and everything else. So I, I but I honestly, give me some copper box or uh, brown paper bag looking box. I'm perfectly fine with it because I really care about the product. I know packaging is important, uh, but I, the, I ripped the edges doing that. Um, but whatever, I'm throwing it away. <laughs> Not the part you're here for, I'm sure. So now we're gonna actually go ahead and open it up. First, we'll pull out the rack ears. So. Standard, you know, nice metal with the double rolled edge uh, rack ears, well made. We got some rack nuts. We got the screws for the rack ears. One standard power cord, uh, nice and heavy. So it doesn't, it's not those really cheap thin ones that we've seen. A manual that I won't read, but thank you for putting it in there because I just prefer to read these things online. And of course the switch itself. So on the back, we have two fans, console connector, optional uh, 48 volt DC or 24 volt DC power input. So if you're running this somewhere where you don't have this plugged in, but you have 24 volt in your rack, that's another option to plug this in. And then in front, we have your SFP plus ports. And they got the nice little rubber stoppers in them to keep the dust out or any debris from getting in there. And then we have four 10 gig RJ45s. This is a great feature. That way you can plug in some of your stuff in your rack, your other devices, other switches, you need to aggregate a 10 gigabit to the SFP plus. And then here we can connect maybe some computers or any other devices that need to be connected via RJ45 10 gigabit switching. So you have both in here and none of them are shared. I've actually looked and seen some switch companies make them where these are shared. These are 16 individual ports, 12, as I said, being SFP, and then these four. Now these ports do support aggregation. You can support up to four of them being aggregated together. So you can increase the bandwidth potentials on there in case 10 gigabit is not fast enough for you. So that's definitely nice. I have tested this and we got a fiber SFP module that we'll put in. And this is not the Unify one. This is a cheapy one I found off eBay. Uh, they fit right in standard SFP plus 10 gig and it does work. I have not tested it with a variety of them. I just happen to have one here that I've tested with. And we're gonna get into the software here in a second. We're also gonna be connecting this with your DAC cables. So we have those as well. So we have the uh, 10 gig DAC cables. They click snap right in and uh, these are the passive, they're the shorter ones, direct attach copper cables. If you have an IDF from this far away, you may be hooking them up with one of these right here. So you take a quick look inside of it. It's pretty simple layout, nice and clean. I love the modularness in case for some reason something had to be replaced. You do have this ability to slide these out, power supply and things like that. Uh, Real simple, here's our 48 volt one over here, your standard power supply converter over here, and two big heat sinks. I'm assuming this one controls the SFP ports and this one is for the RJ45s. Uh, we've actually had this switch in use for a little while. I took it out of testing so we could do this video. Uh, it runs really cool. I have not heard these fans wrap up. I do not have all the ports in use. I've only had four in use when we were doing it, but the heat level of this after running it overnight was really relatively low. So it's definitely not that um, heat intensive, which is a positive here. And just based on the fact that it doesn't have a massively heavy duty power supply in here, well, it's not a PoE switch first, but it's probably because it doesn't require a ton of energy to work. Uh, so it doesn't, it doesn't take up much. Now, that being said, there is the fact that when you plug in fiber modules or active DAC cables, they do draw power from here. So maybe if I had a few of those, it would get a little bit warmer. But like I said, they've put these very large heat sinks and a pair of fans. 
It also operates fairly quiet, once again, because the fans aren't really having to move a lot of air. But, you know, we still have nice airflow through here and these nice heat sinks on it. But I just want to give you a peek inside. Everything is, you know, the standard we see with Ubiquiti products. Really clean, nice looking, and uh, like I said, and once again, modular on the fans as well. That's a important part. That way, if I ever had to replace a fan in one of these, I'm not trying to solder something to a little board. I'm just removing this and popping another fan in, and away we go. One last comment I'll add about the hardware. The switch is all metal, like all the other Unified switches that we've tested. It's really solid and comes apart really easy. So there's only the four screws in here and uh, not a big deal to take it apart. It slides out nice, it slides back together. It's not a tedious or a hard to do job. They, I feel as though they've got the manufacturing down really well at uh, Ubiquity. So their switches, like I said, that, that's a nice thing being able, if you have to take them apart, not being difficult because uh, when something breaks it's and it's really hard to take apart and disassemble the case slides off without messing with any of the wires the only thing i did was pull out the little rubber stoppers so when it slid past those uh, they didn't catch on it that was it we have the switch plugged in and fired up and a couple servers plugged into it in port one we have an sfp module for fiber in port two we have a direct attached copper and in port 13 in the yellow cord is going to a 10 gigabit connection on a base station X3. Review coming soon on that. And the final red port is an uplink to the rest of our network. That is just a standard uh, gigabit connection. Now this is the Unify 5929 and the latest as of November of 2018. And I pulled up our 24 port switch and then our cleverly named by my staff 10 gig and SFPO switch because they were apparently excited when they were playing with this thing. Um, the ports show when they're plugged in at gigabit, white, to show that they're 10, I'm sorry, 10 gigabit is white, and gigabit is green, just like it is on the previous switches, um, and still has the kind of orangish color if uh, you were plugged in at less than 10 gig, like a 10 megs or 100 megs on there. Now, something I will note, and I'm going to take port 13 for an example here. So if we look at port 13 and we want to try to do a manual negotiation, the only link speed supported is either gigabit or 10. So I thought that was kind of interesting. You can't force a, a slower link negotiation, but you didn't buy a 10 gig switch to have really slow link negotiations. And if you take, for example, right here, and then we go ahead and hit this, and then we go here, you can see, whoop, profile overrides, manual, and you have the different options. Just a side note that that's something in there. Like I said, I doubt that's really something you'd be doing with it. I like in the details here, we have the temperature of the switch, we have the fan level, uptime, uh, memory usage. So your usual stats that you have from Unify, you can see the different things that are hooked up to it, what IP addresses they're getting, which is pretty cool. Tool-wise, we still have our usual debug terminal. We have our uh, stats that we can do over here. And it supports all the other same features we're used to with Unify switches, as in the VLANs and everything else, and they propagate across the network. So any of the things I have assigned to the rest of my network in terms of VLAN, if I wanted to edit a particular switch, here's our VLAN 10, IoT network, all those same rules apply on the 10 gig switches as they do for all the other Unify. So it integrates really nicely into the network, which is you know one of the reasons we get these. Uh, once you have some Unify stuff, you kind of want all the Unify stuff. Now, speed-wise, no problems. I've tested this, and it works perfectly fine in terms of bandwidth and transfers. And yes, it does support aggregation. So if you want to create aggregated ports in here and do aggregation, one, two, th switches, three, four, you can do up to that and apply, and it will then bond all these together to create the aggregation. Now, Someone had complained about this before. This is a feature of the way Unify works. When you do aggregation, I can't aggregate like port one and port nine and then port 12 to aggregate them. It does want them to be in order, one through four, four through whichever. Whichever one you start at, you go the next four up or however you want to look at that. But that is just the design of the way the Unifies aggregate together. I don't find this really to be an issue, uh, but I've seen people comment on that. Like they want to be able to randomly grab ports and aggregate them together. And the aggregation does support these as well. Uh, I didn't try this. Let's try this right now in the video. Can I aggregate from an SFP to this? I don't know. Will it let me? Well, it does have the option to do it. 
But uh, I don't know that it would actually work, and I don't have the time to set it up and test. So I don't know for sure if you can do that, but it, it didn't stop me here <laughs> from from uh, creating it. Yep, so it let me create the port aggregation for there. That's interesting. Maybe that'll be another experiment to see if that actually would transfer where I can mix SFP and RJ45 together to create an aggregation. Seems logical that it should work. Now, your other Unify features still apply as well that you're used to in their other switches. We'll run down... Some of the details here, unicast, multicast, broadcast, LODP options, uh, rate limiting on here. So you can fix uh, an egress rate limit to that particular switch port. So that's there too. Plus it has a port isolation options. Like I said, it's pretty much the same as the other unified switches and features. It's just done at 10 gigabit. Uh, my overall review of this switch, though, testing it out and speed and performance of it, no problems. It works really well. It's as... You know, as advertised, we're getting the same switch. I tried direct through it and not through it. Um, I got the same amount of speed based on the tools I had. Now, the last thing I will cover, it does know what's plugged in. So when we go here, and you can see when I mouse over it, um, this is the DAC cable. So compliance DAC, voltage, current, temperature, etc. No information. But here, we have voltage, current, temperature. And what it's doing is... on each port, because this one happens to be a port that's plugged in via the SFP with the fiber on it, it does pull some voltage to convert it over to fiber optic. So with the fiber optic on there, it, you know, we can still see that it uh, has a separate temperature meter, it has a current voltage that it's using, and uh, output power, input power. And this is what I said, if I had a whole lot of these coppers that may make the switch a little bit warmer, but so far, it's not warm, and it works well with this this copper in there. Like I said, the, the switch has been great. Uh, I haven't, I've got these, we've got clients that have been using them for a while and never had any problems with them. Uh, they seem to be really popular. This particular one is actually going in for us because we're switching some of the stuff in our back end uh, to be more 10 gig than it is now. Right now, we have 10 gig directly between, so this is just an update to our rack to uh, put more 10 gig stuff in. But the switch is definitely great. If you already have Unify and you like the way the Unify platform works and the ease of use, it's just a drop into your network, merges right in with all the other equipment, and easy to set up as any of the other Unify tools. So it's definitely a, a, a great device if you need 10 gig. And it's not unreasonably priced for getting 12 SFP and 4 uh, copper 10 gig ports. So if you're looking for a 10 gig up for your network, this is a great buy. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit orangesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.